We have a couple of just little pictures of us since we can't have a lot of stuff in here. So a few personal items that we like to keep with us no matter what. All right, did you brush them good? Let me see. All right, good. Currently we are staying in a homeless shelter. We've been here for about a month and a half. No car, no belongings, but our backpacks when we got here. Here we gotta mask it up, ready to go. Megan DeShroon and her six-year-old son Bradley moved into this homeless shelter in June after she could no longer ready? afford their rent. Let's go. Start of COVID, I was teaching and then the school had shut down on March 13th. And so with that, I lost my job when we had everything. And then in a blink of eye, we didn't have anything anymore. Oh, hey, we forgot to tie your shoes. <laughs> she says her landlord ignored the federal okay. eviction moratorium and okay. gave her 30 days to vacate. Good? Good. Rather than fight him, she left. They're now among what the government estimates could be over 150,000 families living in homelessness in the United States. The shelter that we stay at, they said, hey, there is a school that is just for homeless kids because the outside world is rough enough. They're going through tough enough times. Let's give them a place where they can be happy, creative, free, in a stress-free environment. And as soon as they told me that, I was like, yes, that's where I want it. The bus is here. Y'all are going to be in class together today. You're down here? Last month, Bradley started the first grade at Positive Tomorrows, an elementary school program in Oklahoma City designed specifically for homeless children. We're all going to get a paper that looks like this. The first step, I'm going to give you your paper. You're going to write your name, okay? They are coming from backgrounds that are very chaotic. They're behind socially. They're behind academically. And so it's our intention to get these children up to speed in those areas. What are the challenges for a child experiencing homelessness in the regular school system? It may be something as simple as they don't have internet access at home or else you're the, always the kid who comes to school without school supplies. You can grab a crayon or a marker. They don't get to do a lot of things. They don't get to do birthday parties. They don't do sleepovers. Sometimes they're kind of outcast. So when they come here, they are just like everybody else. Is that it? Okay. You got it. Positive Tomorrows is one of only a handful of programs like it across the country. Students who live in the area are accepted on a first-come, first-served basis until the school is at capacity. They come from a variety of unstable housing situations, including emergency shelters, transitional housing, motels, and couch homelessness. Oh, so it wants you to match your letters? The school was founded in 1989 and is paid for almost entirely by private donations. Everything from the architecture to the curriculum is designed explicitly to support students experiencing homelessness. So we call this our family room. This is where the kiddos eat. We call that our backyard. Kids were a part of the architecture process, getting to sit down and just draw plans for what they think a school should look like. What did you hear the most from kids that was important to them? So I think personal space. And as you'll see, we have uh, some cubbies that have their name on them, especially if you're living in a shelter or with your brothers and sisters in a car. Private space really is something that you just don't get a lot of chance to experience. We want to make sure that we meet all the basic needs. So when they, we do our enrollment and they say to us, well, I don't really have clothes for the first day of school or a backpack. We say, don't worry about it. We got all that stuff. Did you get your backpack from here? What was that like? I picked a backpack out. You got to pick that out? A red one. Will you tell us a little bit about um, where you are, like with your mom? What it's I'm like in there? Homeless shelter. What's it been like for you guys being there? Like jail. What do you mean? Like prison. If we were going to tell someone who'd never been in here before about this place, like what would you want them to know that the school? I tell them about the swings, tell them about the monkey bars and the other monkey bars. How did the pandemic affect the families that you have here? Are you seeing different kinds of homelessness? Part of what's going to happen is it, it's going to be a lagging indicator that happens after the eviction moratorium ends. We did see last year during the school year a higher level of neglect than we typically see. 
we saw more evidence of domestic violence than we typically see. Most of our families work. They just can't earn a living wage. I think there's a lot of people, even in the state of Oklahoma, that are just a couple of paychecks away from homelessness. And it just could be that everything goes wrong and you can't quite get it together, and then it's hard to climb out of that hole. Each family at Positive Tomorrows gets a case manager who helps parents navigate finding housing and other resources they might not know are available. Thank you. All righty. We're going to do a emergency housing voucher. Um, so this would be Section 8. Have you um, had a Section 8 voucher before? No, I haven't. Okay. So Positive Tomorrows can help you pay for the deposit for the housing. When did you move into the City Rescue Mission? Remind me. Um, it's going to be a month and a week on Thursday. How's that going? <clears throat> I know that it can be tough living in a, At in a shelter. At first, it was rough. Yeah. At first, it really was because I was like, I'm a bad mom for being in this situation. But once I you know, really start looking at it differently. I knew that I wasn't, and it's honestly not that bad of a place to be whatsoever. And I would argue that you are a good mom for uh -huh. getting you to a, a um, stable place to, to, you know, have a roof over your head. Thank you. Um, so on this next one. Kids stay in the school until their living situation is stable enough for them to return to more traditional public schools, usually about two years. For now, Positive Tomorrows can take about 100 students in its pre-K and elementary school programs. In the coming years, it has plans to add a middle school and double in size. But it will still only be able to serve a tiny fraction of the 25,000 homeless students in Oklahoma alone, or the nearly 1.5 million homeless students nationally. Do you think that there's a role for the government to yeah. contribute more to this kind of model? Yeah, I, I do think the government has a responsibility to do so. What? We take a child who's not doing well in school. Lives are chaotic, they're moving from place to place, bouncing from school to school. I know that that child is a drain on the public school system. All right, Bradley, you're up again, bud. Oh, very good, ah. Oh. But if we can take that child and mold it into a child who is performing well in the classroom, who understands how to deal with some of the trauma that's impacted him in the past, I know that I have saved the public school a lot of money and time and effort. A few weeks after Bradley started school, Deshroon got a new job in administration at a local high school. She's actively seeking permanent housing, but for now, they're still living in the shelter. What was important to you or appealing to you about having him go to a school with other children who are also experiencing homelessness? Knowing that even if you don't have anything, you're still human, you're still a person. There's other people going through the same exact things you are. And I thought it was important for all the kids to be able to go to school together and learn and laugh and be happy and be in a safe environment and learn from each other. He's six years old. Like, um, I just want him to be a kid and not have to worry about the hard stuff. 